my mother was really upset um, that I wasn't going to be home for Thanksgiving because it was really the first time a family member wasn't going to be around for a major holiday. In that early part of November, Doc said, asked the, the freshman, any of you not going to be able to go home for Thanksgiving? And I was the only one, apparently, which surprised me. And he said, Mrs. Edgerton likes her techies in ties and jackets. Do you have a tie and a jacket, Gus? And I said, I do, Doc. I have a blue blazer with brass buttons that I've never worn before. So he invited me. I was really excited. But boy, oh boy, it was the beginning of, of a journey with Doc that changed my life, empowered me. It was such an amazing experience. I want to share a couple of my favorite photos. Uh, Doc, uh, I think of these as iconic. What I love about these photos is you can capture his grin. He just has this infectious grin on, on his face. Doc was charismatic, magnetic. He sort of took me in as family. Back at home, I was going just personally through a very difficult time. My own dad was sick. So Doc was not only a mentor, a friend, but also cared about me during that period. Doc and Esther lived in two apartments on the top floor at Hunter Memorial Drive, and I was living in East Campus, and it was five minute walk. As soon as you walked in, it was a, a wonderful hello. Hi, Marty, come on in. And, uh... and Doc says, this is Gus Kafas." At the time, he pronounced my name incorrectly. He's a freshman from Maryland. He's in the freshman seminar. At Doc's uh, dinners, at Thanksgiving, or any of his dinners, you never know who might be there. Doc knew everybody. Jacques Cousteau, Madame Cousteau, President Stratton, Mrs. Stratton, the chairman of the corporation, J James Killian, and his wife, and me and Doc and Esther. That was Thanksgiving. Cousteau, I was in awe of. And he spoke about having Doc on adventures. And he said in, in the 50s, when you're on a boat in the ocean, communications were sketchy. You really were on your own. He said, Doc had his guitar. So I brought one of my favorite pictures, which is uh, my grandfather and his guitar. If, if anybody, uh, ever went to dinner or connected with him, he often pulled out his uh, vintage Martin guitar. He could just pound on that thing and sing. He loved to sing. He would sing, she's coming around the mountain when she comes, and he would just sing with gusto. He had a loud singing voice. Uh, it may not have been the best in the room, but he had a lot of enthusiasm. Doc enjoyed life. He taught a passion for life. You felt good, exhilarated after after one of those dinners that you just had a good time. The next morning, my mom called, crying, Gussie, was it terrible? And I said, Mom, I got to meet Cousteau. And I went on and on about it, and there was dead silence on the other end. And I said, but Mom, it was nothing like a family Thanksgiving. It's just so much more than I ever expected. And when I told my dad about that, he, he, he agreed. He said, you know, boy, well, MIT sure is a special place, isn't it? And I said, yeah. If you go to the Edgerton Center even today, and we're, what, 30 years kind of after he's, he's gone, and 60 years after he retired, there is still an active presence and, and support for the MIT students from him. And that, that's pretty incredible. <laughs>